Prime Minister of Israel from 1999 to 2011. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, thank you very much for being here. Uh, what can you tell us about today's news? It's very good news. Uh, we hope to see more of it. It's clearly very high on our priorities, but we can never lose sight of the real reason we are here. There was a kind of a carnage, a kind of a crime against humanity. You know, probably 1,500 people were slaughtered in the picture that we didn't see since, since Eastern Europe under the Nazis during World War II. And uh, by far the, the most severe blow that Israel suffered since its establishment. So we have a commitment to uh, make sure that these events can never again happen. So the only way to do it is not through air attacks. It has to do deploying a, a major force on the ground to make sure that we destroy every uh, physical uh, military capabilities of Hamas and running after the people who perpetrated it and the very capacity of Hamas to rule the Gaza Strip, this will have to happen. So bear it in mind that you will understand that this whole operation is uh, complicated, but we are very happy to meet uh, Yochevet and uh, Nurit back home. Yeah, this is a picture of Yoheved um, that we uh, have up on the screen here. This is Yoheved Lipschitz. Uh, she, uh, according to um, Israeli reports and interviews that I've seen done uh, with her family, she was a, 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 a peace activist that she would, uh, when she was allowed to, drive Gazans from Gaza to Israeli medical centers uh, for treatment. Uh, she was the founder of the kibbutz near Oz, um, which was w right, which is right near the Gaza border, and was one where the most horrific slaughter, one of the most horrific slaughters, took place. As Raf Sanchez uh, told us a moment ago, I believe he toured that kibbutz uh, with the Israeli army and, and saw the aftermath. Her husband Oded is still, uh, as far as we know, uh, being held by Hamas. Her 83-year-old husband Oded, who was taken with her, um, Prime Minister, let me ask you. You're talking about the ground invasion. You're saying it has to happen because Israel has to root out Hamas. How long should they delay the ground invasion to negotiate for hostages? It depends on details, which which I don't have, and even if I would have, I, I'm not sure I would share it with you. But the whole operation is taking place under four uh, delicate tightening constraints. One is the hostages. The other is the risk that it will spread to the northern border to Hezbollah. Third one is the, the uh, international law and our uh, being aware of the fact that our uh, legitimacy will erode a long time when more and more uh, citizens or uh, civilians in, in Gaza Street will be hurt. And the last one is even if we complete the whole mission and probably four or six months from now, we uh, cleaned any military capability of Hamas, there is still a question to whom we will pass the torch of the ruling of uh, the Gaza Strip. And these all constraints are interconnected and interwined, and only people with the uh, real time picture of details can make the decisions. And I, I trust our World Cabinet to take care of all these. Uh, Problems or should it just sensitivity? Should it just be the war cabinet and talking about what happens next, or do, should you be going to the, or should the government be going to the international community to make sure that that is accepted by the Palestinians? Because right now it's unclear that the Palestinians will accept whatever Israel puts in place there. If Israel is the one putting in place a government after this. Uh, the, the last constraint, the one that has to do with who will take it from us, of, of course, would be uh, negotiated or, or prepared only with someone else. Some 15 years ago, I was a uh, defense minister, and uh, around some of the same rounds, I, uh, the, the question was, oh, even then, I asked Mubarak, are you ready to take, after we will take over the, the, the uh, Gaza Strip and uh, eliminate the Hamas, Will you take it under uh, uh, your your uh, international, uh, multinational Arab force uh, to take care of it for a very short period and bring back the Palestinian Authority? He told me, no, no, you conquered Gaza in uh, 67, it's yours. 
I approached uh, uh, Abu Mazen, uh, Abbas, the head of Palestinian Authority. He said the same. I, I'm not going to come back to Gaza on sitting on Israeli bayonets. But having said that, this was 15 years ago. Nowadays, with the trilateral deal with the soldiers on the on the air and the Abraham Accords, that a lot of financial support could be given by Qatar and the soldiers. I would have checked it very carefully, and I hope that a solution will be found. But anyhow, we will have to execute this operation against the Hamas because no no sovereign country can have this kind of uh, Al Qaeda or ISIS like um, uh, murderous barbarians on its uh, border, uh, uh, slaughtering its uh, citizens. Uh, that's unacceptable. We cannot uh, live with it. Prime Minister, back to the hostages. The families are demanding that this be Israel's number one priority ahead of rooting out Hamas. First, hostages. Do you agree? I would leave it to the uh, World Cabinet. There are two issues. They are both at, at the highest uh, level of priorities, but the, the decisions could be made only by those who are responsible for both and have to look in the real time. It's so delicate, it depends on so many nuances that it cannot be responsibly discussed over the uh, TV. In terms of negotiation, there has been a look back and potentially some criticism that Israel released a thousand hostages for one Israeli soldier. One of those hostages, not hostages, so, uh, prisoners, a thousand prisoners for one Israeli hostage, Gilad Shalit, uh, back in 2011. And that one of those prisoners then became the head of Hamas in Gaza and helped orchestrate this attack. When you're talking about negotiating with Hamas, can you do a trade like this right now? Will you do it? Well, not you, but will Israel do a trade like this now? Is that even on the table? I don't know what you mean by uh, like that. Uh, we have responsibility for these people. It's, uh, they are not even soldiers. Gilad Shalit was a soldier. was taken under a military operation. These people were taken out of their beds or out of their homes, and they are all civilians. And there are too ma ma many, many of them. So it's much more complicated situation and we will consider every way that might uh, cause their release. We'll consider it, but at the same time, we should be honest enough to tell you and uh, the world, we are going to eliminate the military capabilities of Hamas and the personnel and everything at their capacity to rule over the Gaza Strip, uh, because we had to do it. America sent its forces over half of the globe in, in order to kill uh, Daesh and uh, uh, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, as you call it, and, and Al-Qaeda, we have them just a few hundred yards uh, from our border, and we have to put an end to it once and forever, however costly and painful it's going to be. Prime Minister Ehud Barak, Prime Minister from 1991. 1990.